This is a distance formula. It can be used to calculate the distance between two points. So over here I have a coordinate graph that has two points on it. Point A is this blue one, 3, 7, and point B is down here, negative 2, negative 5. And we can use this distance formula to figure out exactly how long this line is. Now, the distance formula looks complicated, but only until you understand what this x2, x1, y2, and y1 represent. So remember, you have two points here. Each point has an x value and a y value. It's important that you keep those x values and y values separate. Since we have two x's and two y's, you need to know which is your first x and your first y, and which is your second x and your second y. So write down your ordered pairs, label them x1, y1, x2, y2, and then all you need to do is plug them into the formula in the right places. So the distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1. Well, x2 is down here, so negative 2 minus 3. So we can see that here. And then we're going to square that value. And we're going to add it to y2 minus y1 squared. So y2 is negative 5 minus 7 squared. Okay. So all we do is we just plug them in, and then we solve them. So negative 2 minus 3 is going to give us negative 5 squared. And then negative 5 minus 7 gives us negative 12 squared. Now, it's really important in this step here that you pay attention to negative 5 squared. If you, in your calculator, just do negative 5 squared like this, you're going to get an answer that's negative 25, because the exponent only applies to what it touches. And in this case, it's only touching the 5. So essentially, this is saying 5 squared, and then it's negative. Okay? In order to do this problem correctly, you have to put your negative 5 in parentheses. And we've talked about this before, but this is just a reminder. So negative 5 squared is 25. Negative 12 squared is going to be 144. And then we're going to add these two amounts together. So 25 plus 144 gives me 169. And then our last step is going to be to take this square root. Now the square root of 169 is either positive or negative 13. I only listed our positive value here because we're talking about a distance, and distance can't be negative. So the length of this line is 13 units. Now, if you're given a coordinate graph, you could also use your Pythagorean theorem here. What you would do is you would continue, draw these lines from these points to create a right triangle. And you can see the length of this side, if you count up the boxes, is 5, and the length of this side here is 12. And then we can just plug those values into our Pythagorean theorem. So a squared is going to be 5 squared, b squared is going to be 12 squared, and that's going to equal c squared. Okay, so we get 25 plus 144 equals c squared. This might look a little familiar to what you have up here. What you're going to notice is the numbers are the same. Your symbols might be different, but watch what happens now. When I do 25 plus 144, I get 169 equals c squared. But we don't want c squared. We're going to take our square root. Now look, this is exactly the same. The square root of 169, whoops, is 13. Positive or negative, but again, we're just talking distance. So let's try a couple other problems here. So we're going to find the distance between these two points. 1 comma 7 which is going to be right up here, and I'm going to label that x1, y1, and 5, 4 down here. That'll be my x2, y2. So I'm going to take these values and plug them into my formula. So 5 minus 1, so x2 minus x1, and then y2 minus y1 is 4 minus 7. So we're going to do 4 squared plus negative 3 squared. So 4 squared is 16 negative 3 squared is 9, and we're going to end up with the distance being the square root of 25, which of course, positive or negative 5, since we're just talking distance, it's just a positive 5. If you wanted to use your Pythagorean theorem, again, remember you need to create your right triangle, which would be here. We have a side of 3 and a side of 4. So we have 4 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared, 16 plus 9, 
So we get 25 equals c squared. We'll take the square root of both sides, and we see that that's 5. Okay, so the problems, once you understand the formula, are pretty straightforward. This one has two little glitches in it. So we're just going to show you again. We're going to start with these two points on our grid. We've got our negative 4, 7 up here, and we've got 0, negative 1 down here. We're going to plug in. Now here's our first glitch. If I do x2 minus x1, x2 is 0, x1 is negative 4, so this is going to be 0 minus negative 4. Okay? Now, usually I wouldn't write minus negative, because you guys know when we do minus a negative, that's really a plus. So I would normally write it as a plus, but I just wanted you to see. And then we're going to do y2 minus y1, which is going to be negative 1 minus 7. So we've got 0 plus 4, which is 4. Negative 1 minus 7 gives me negative 8. So 4 squared is going to be 16. Negative 8 squared is going to be 64. And when we add those together, we get the square root of 80. Now, this again is our second little glitch here, but we've done these before. So if you take your square root of 80, what you're going to see is you get a big long decimal. Just round it to the nearest tenth. So the distance here would be 8.9. If we wanted to use our Pythagorean theorem, again, this only works if we have this grid to work with. Um, we would have a side of 8 and a side of 4. So 4 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. We're going to get 16 plus 64 equals c squared. So that's 80. We're going to take the square root of both sides, and we see our answer is 8.9. Now, when you have both the points and a grid, you can use either one of these two methods. But we're going to move into getting problems that are just two sets of ordered pairs without a grid, so you're going to need to be familiar with your distance formula. The formula itself will be given to you. You'll just need to know how to plug the numbers in.